Good morning and praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, for this is the day that the Lord has made. I am rejoicing and I am already glad in it. I pray that you are too. I pray that you are ready for the word of the Lord on this morning. I am so excited about what God has revealed to me already. Um, as I got up um, for my morning devotion, I got up, I've been getting up really before my clock even goes off. So. I got up this morning, um, got myself together, uh, prepared my communion because whenever I fast, I take communion as well. So I was doing my communion. And as I got ready, I had did the, you know, the bread, the body. I did the bread and I did the grape juice. I don't do wine. So <laughs> I did the grape juice. And the Lord just told me, he said, he says, daughter, he said, for all of those that's on there this morning, this, this is going to bless y'all. So make sure you're tagging people. He said, for all of those that's on there this morning, he said, tell them it's going to be all right. Listen, oh God, he said, just tell them it's going to be all right. It's go, go ahead and drop that in the chat. It is going to be all right. Oh my God, help me, Holy Ghost. It's going to be all right. And I just begin to, to grin. I begin to laugh. I said, oh Lordy, I said, it's on now. He said, uh -uh. He, said he said, I need you to tell them. Listen, he said, I need you to tell them. That it's going to be all right, Penny. It's going to be all right, Tamika. It's going to be all right, Tracy, Karen, Mama. It's going to be all right, Maureen. It's going to be all right. Wendy, he said, listen, he said, because they got to understand, as long as they're following me, listen, Brenda, as long as you're following me, Angel, Emily, he said, as long as you're following me, I got you. Watch this. He said, as long as you're doing what I told you to do, I got you. He said, the problem is, okay, I'm trying. <laughs> let, me, let me just slow it down. He said, the problem is I need them to realize, watch this, the difference in them worrying and them being concerned. Uh-oh. Ah, oh, God. He said, I need you to get the difference in worrying and being concerned. So to, I can tell you right now, I've already been in warfare about against the spirit of worrying. Because when you start worrying, it get in your spirit. What, what happens when I worry, when I am, this is not what we're going for our, um, teaching this morning. This is just, <laughs> listen, <laughs> listen, he said, the Lord began to reveal to him. He says, daughter, he said, because when they worry, he says that opens up the gate for all other spirits to enter in. Here comes doubt. Here comes fear. He said, when you worry, you opening up the gate. He said, he said, it's a difference in you being worried about a situation and you being concerned about it. Uh oh, because when I'm concerned about something, I let my daddy know. Uh oh. Oh, Jesus. Listen to me. Go. When I'm when I'm concerned about something, I'm going to discuss it with when you're concerned about something, you discuss it with somebody. When you're worried about something that's internal, you holding it in. You ain't trying to tell nobody. It's just that that negative thought that just keep coming. It's that negative thought that I can't get rid of. I believe you, God. But you know what? I'm seeing what everybody else getting laid off. I believe you, God. But you know what? I know everybody else to die with that. I believe you, God. But I, and so now you worrying. What if I did, did you get? OK, I'm telling y'all, listen. So when I worry about something, I open up the gate for mind traffic. Uh oh, because now you get on this thing of what if I'm in the vein, you say, Dr. Three, you own it this morning. Listen, so so, so oh, Jesus. So so when you get on th this, when, when you get when, when worryation step in and it that spirit of worryation step in, you get on this cycle of mind traffic and mind confusion. What is mind traffic? Mind traffic is like a cycle. What if this happened? What if this happened? What if I don't? What if I die? What's going to happen to my kids? What's, and, and you're just going, 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 going. And what happens is when you get on that, listen, is now it's in your spirit. So you start operating. Listen, Holy Ghost, you ain't playing this one. Listen, so then you start operating. Everything I'm doing is based on this worry. Everything that I'm doing is based on this fear because now I'm worried about, I'm worried about, well, what if I lose my job? What if I get replaced? What if I don't have a job? What is that? So everything I'm doing is based on that. Hmm. Oh, Lord. But when I'm concerned about, so oh God, when I'm concerned about something, Jackie, what I'm going to do is go tell my daddy. What I'm going to do is get on my face. When I'm concerned about it, I'm going to the one that can help me. Okay. I don't even know. <laughs> Angel, I don't even, all that right there. All that right there. See, this is what happened. 
This is what happened when you fast and you pray. You can prepare one thing to say, but as soon as you say, God, I got to go before your people. He'll give you something fresh out, look, hot off the press, fresh out. And, and I say, God, before I even get on here, I'm going to give you a little insight to what I, all that I do. Before I even get on here, first of all, I'm getting up at least an hour before I go live because I got to get in his presence. I got to take my communion. And when, why are you taking communion, Dr. Three, when you're fasting? Because my flesh got to die. <laughs> oh God. What does communion mean? I commune with him. I'm partaker of his death, burial, and resurrection. I understand that the blood, okay. That is why I take communion when I fast because I understand before I go for your before I go before your people, God, this flesh got to die. Before I go before your people, God, they can't see none of peaches. Before I go before your people, God, you got to give me a prophetic word. You got to download because I can't get on there. I can't get on there and they start seeing me. Oh Lord, I can't get on there and they start seeing all of me. I need them to hear God. I need to hear, I need you to hear what God is saying. What is the spirit of the Lord saying to the church? This is why. And my daughters always say, well, I want to do all other preachers go through all that that you be going through because you be just doing the most. I mean, you got to, you got to shut in. You, you don't want to go nowhere. You can't have eat. You, I mean, you, I said, I don't know what it takes for them, but I know what it takes for, oh God, but I know what it takes for me. So what am I, what is God saying this morning? Some of y'all got to realize it's going to take more for you than everybody else. You're not going to do it. Oh, Lord, listen, Jay, you're not going to do it like everybody else do it. It may take more. You may have to be in his presence more. You may have to be on your face more because to whom much is given, much is required. Your flesh got to die. Listen, he already gave me. Oh, God, I'm trying to get to this lesson, but but he just downloaded so much. And then it's this dream that I had on last night. Cause you know, when I'm fasting and praying, all that God just download um, prophetic dreams. It's this dream that I had that, that I have to. Um, he he got to finish giving me the rest of it. Then I'm going to share it with you. But on Friday, I'm going to tell you, on Friday, I, I was thinking about Friday on yesterday. And I was like, hmm, Lord, you ain't gave me no word for Friday yet. Like, this is kind of what, what we doing. Because you know, if, I, if, if you don't get it to me in the right amount of time, I would cancel. I don't care if it's already paid for. I'm not getting it for the people if you ain't giving me a word for them. Watch it. So, <laughs> so, so listen. So, listen, I was in um, prayer or uh, talking to the Lord about Friday night. And, and he gave me the word, and I've shared this same word before. He said, new. I said, oh, Jesus. <laughs> he said, new. That's for Friday. Go ahead and drop that in the chat. New. That's for Friday. New, 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 new. He said, I make all things new. He said, new. He said, Nicodemus asked me, how, should, how can I be born again? Can a man go back in his mother's womb a second time? He said, remember the whole conversation? I said, I remember that. He said, yeah, but I, I was trying to tell him that he need to be born again and made new. Who oh, Lord? New. Listen. <laughs> oh, God. New on Friday. That, that's your word for Friday. But listen, on this morning, he began to tell me. He said, tell my people. He said, tell my ones that get on there this morning. He said, they got to understand. It's going to be all right. He said, whatever you're going through, he said, I'm processing you. He said, I got you. He said, don't worry about it. Don't stress about it. He said, and I'm saying, don't worry. He said, because when you worry, you're going to open up the gate for fear. You're going to open up the gate for doubt. You're going to open up the gate for mind confusion. You're going to open up the gate for all these other demonic spirits that come along with worrying. He said, you can't worry. You can be concerned. He said, if you're concerned, you're just going to talk to me about it. Oh, God. If you're concerned, just think about this. Just think about it this way. Because I've been through therapy a few times. <laughs> we all need it. And, and I remember going to the therapist. And whenever I, whenever I went to the therapist, oh, this is going to bless y'all. Whenever I went to the therapist, she would say, all right, Elizabeth, well, what is on your mind? Listen, she was so sweet. She would say, what's on your mind? And so I would begin to Tell her all these things that was on my mind, what I was concerned about, what I was going through. And I would always notice after I talked to her, I sure felt better. And I'm like, I got all that off. Oh, listen, I got all that off me. Some of y'all, you know, I just saw y'all in the spirit right now. Some of y'all need to get out the bed, sit up and pay attention. Wake all the way. Y'all just drop in the chat. Wake all the way up this morning. Wake all the way up this morning. So you can hear because what, what, what the enemy does is he try to tell you, you tired. Look, you girl, you ain't got to be at work to this time. Why are you up this early? You can lay in the bed, stay under the covers and just listen. No, you need to get up. You need to see my whole face this morning. Listen, get up, pay attention because what the Lord is, listen, the Lord just told me, he said, because what the enemy is doing even right now while you talking is he trying to send a spirit of sleep. Well, okay. 
<laughs> he said, I'm trying to send a spirit of sleep on them. He said, I'm trying to put them to sleep. Jay said, he's sitting on the porch <laughs> in the rain looking. <laughs> Listen, he said, he said, I'm trying to send a spirit of sleep on them so they can't hear what you're saying. Oh God. He said, because I need, this, because this is what Satan wants to do. I told you he's tricky, he conniving, he all that, but he ain't got no new tricks. He just recycling stuff. He said, what I'm trying to do is to get them right now to not hear you talk about that spirit of, of worrying because I need to keep it there so they don't, so, so they can stay stagnated. But I'm telling you, wake up, pay attention. Wake up, pay attention this morning. Wake up and pay attention this morning. Listen, listen, let me get into the word. Let me get into the word. We are talking about, as you all know, we're on day three of our fast and consecration. We are on day three. And the Lord says we are dealing with rejection. We are dealing with rejection. So our scripture, our scripture for the whole week has been Luke, Luke 4, 14 through 22 and Isaiah 61, 1 through 2. So Luke 4, 4 says, Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the spirit and news about him spread through the whole countryside. He was teaching in the synagogues and everyone praised him. He went to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And on the seventh day, he went into the synagogue, as was his custom. He stood up to read and the scroll of the prophet. He stood up to read and the scroll of the prophet was handed to him. Unrolling it, he found the place where it is written. And he reads Isaiah. And it's the same thing that's in Isaiah 61, verses 1 through 2. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set all to set at liberty those who were who are oppressed and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Then he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to his attendant. And he sat down. The eyes of everyone in the synagogue was fastened on him. He began by saying to them, he saw them looking at him. He saw them looking like, wait, what? He says, he says, then he began to say to them today, this scripture is fulfilled that you just heard. I am he. <laughs> I'm the one. I came back home. I came back home. I'm your boy. I was born here. Y'all know me. Y'all know my mom and daddy and my cousins. Y'all know all about me. He said, I came back here to set you free. He said, I came back here to preach the gospel to you. I came back here to heal your broken heart. I came back here to proclaim liberty to those that are captive. He said, I came back here to give sight to the blind. He said, I came back here to set at liberty those who are oppressed. He said, and I came back here to proclaim that this right here is the year of the Lord's favor. He said, I'm the one, I'm your boy. And guess what they said? The last verse says, all spoke well of him and were amazed at the words that came from his lips. And then they said this, Ain't that Joseph boy? <laughs> he was like, I just told y'all that I'm the one. I'm the sick one. I came back home. I could have did all this in Galilee. I went to Galilee first. He said, do you under listen? Because before all this happened, he was up there with Satan. Was He went through the temptation with Satan. He said, and I, he said, and I, he said, I overcame the temptation. I made it through. He said, so I came back in the fullness of power. God. He said, I came back. He said, don't y'all understand who I am? He said, I came back in the fullness of all that power. He said, and they said, oh yeah, that's Joseph's son. <laughs> they rejected him. Who? Listen, listen, listen. They rejected the one that came that had the answer to everything. They, were... they rejected the one that came back home to his people. And they rejected the one that had the answer for everything that you are going through, I got the answer. I am the answer. Oh God, I am the answer. Watch this. And then it says, it says, so, so today we're going to deal with um, the fact we, we're on day three. So today we're dealing with to proclaim liberty to the captives. What, what, what does that mean? Sin makes people captive. He said, I came to deal with the whole point in Jesus coming. <laughs> is because, And we talked about this yesterday. Watch this. The whole point in Jesus having to come dealt with the fact that God was rejected first by Adam and Eve. Remember Adam and Eve in the garden? Don't do this. Don't do this. And they went and did everything he said, don't do. They So the whole point of Jesus coming was because of rejection. I don't want to go through that. I mean, they don't like me. Get over it. Get over it. Hold on. Get over it this morning. You're going to be rejected. It's a part of life. Do you understand to, to, to suffer with him is to reign with him? Do you understand that when I'm rejected, that puts me in good company? Do you understand when they reject me, 
We talked about this. We've been talking about this all week. Do you understand when they reject you, that does not mean they don't like you. That does not mean that they don't care about you. That just means that for this situation, for this purpose right here, I don't need you. Don't mean I don't like you. Don't mean, don't mean I, I'm not going to be your friend. Don't mean all that. It just means that for this situation right here, I don't like you. I don't need your input. I don't need to know what you got to say, Wendy. I don't need to know right now, Wendy, that you got a better solution for me. I don't need to know that. You reject. Watch it. Your kids reject you. Do you do you flip out and fall out and have a whole fit over that? Every time you tell your child, I got some advice for you. As parents, we we listen. We done been there so many times. It's unreal. You tell your kids because we we lived. We know. We know them little tricks. They think we don't know nothing. We already know what they going through. We already know what the outcome gonna be. Listen. And so we tell them. I don't think we give our advice. Listen. I don't think that's not what you need to do. You need to do X, Y, Z. Don't, don't do that. They reject you when they don't do what you said. Do you lose your whole mind over that? You're just like, all right, all right, you're going to learn. You're going to learn. And you just keep moving. As parents, that's what we do. But, but, but in the world when it happened and you get rejected, sometimes we, we, have, we take on, I'm going to put it this way, before this teaching before this teaching about rejection, how rejection is powerful, how rejection can catapult you, how, how rejection can send you to your next level in God. But before this teaching, when we would get rejected in the world, we get all in our feelings. We get depressed. We get angry. I'll talk about the five steps. We go through all that. But when your child do it, you're just like, all right, you're going to learn. <laughs> you're going to learn today. And, and when they, what happens? They always come back. Ma, I should have listened to you. Daddy, you, you were trying to help me. Your kids reject you. Anytime, and what is that saying? Does that mean my kids don't love me? No, that just means they don't want your advice. They hard headed. They ain't gonna listen right now. Don't mean they don't like, love you. Don't mean they don't know that you're smart. Don't mean that they don't know that you're wis that you have wisdom. It just means what, what you telling me right now. I ain't want to hear. I want to do what I want to do. If I mess up and fall, I probably your kids. Oh, they coming back. Ma, I should have listened. You, I should have listened to you. Yeah, yeah. And what we do, love them anyway. Watch this. Same thing in the world. Same thing in the world. They, it's not saying they don't like you. It's not saying they don't, they, they, don't, they don't respect you. I just don't need your advice right now. I want to do it my way. That's what rejection is. Watch this. So Jesus came with the answer and they rejected him. And we all know the story of Jesus. It wasn't the first time he kept being rejected over and over and over and over and over again. <laughs> he showed us how to go through it with, with, with dignity. And in and a, and, and a holy way, he gave us the answer. He gave us a solution. So let's deal with this. He said, I came to proclaim liberty to the captives. He says, sin makes you captive and in, it makes you a prisoner. It makes you a slave. That's what sin does. He said, but I came. <laughs> oh, God. He said, I came to set y'all free. Mm. Do you just drop this in the chat? Jesus came to set me free. Jesus came to set me free. I, and I was when I was working on this yesterday, I began to think, I say, so you know what? If Jesus hadn't came, there would be no forgiveness for sin. If Jesus hadn't came, you sin, you die. Oh, Lord. If Jesus hadn't came, it wouldn't be no such thing as a deliverance ministry for what? How? Ooh, think about it. If Jesus had a never came. <laughs> left his rightful place in heaven, had to be reborn of a baby to a virgin, born into a sinful world. Listen, if he would have never came, it would be no such thing as God, can you forgive me? Can you give me a second chance? No, you're dead. You sin, you die. <laughs> Wouldn't be no such thing as that. Watch this. So he's telling them, this is the way I, this is the reason why I came to proclaim liberty to the captives means I'm going to give you spiritual freedom. Listen to this spiritual freedom from the bondage and slavery of Satan and sin. Ooh, wait a minute. I'm going to give you a solution that Satan can't keep you bound. Oh, God, I'm going to give you a solution that it's a, I got the remedy for sin. Listen to this. He says to be when he says, hold you captive. That means you were taken. That means that he took you on. He, he took you. Watch this and treated you cruel and treat and treated and treated you, Jesus, and treated you cruelty. 
um, in a very cruel way. What does it mean to be taken captive? I'm a prisoner. Woo, Jesus. I am a prisoner. He has taken me captive. And a lot of times it's not by my own doing. Uh oh. It's not because I wanted to be taken captive. It's because he just took me. Woo. Because I opened the door. Uh oh. Because I opened the door and he stepped on worrying. Listen. And then you become a captive of what? You become a captive of worrying. So now I can't get off this cycle, Dr. Three. What, what, what's going on? I mean, I, it, it just keep running over and over in my mind. Baby, he done took your mind captive. Let this mind be in you that was also in Christ. Let, 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 let me stick to the text this morning. <laughs> I keep going back to word. I don't know. I don't know who that's for, but I just keep going back to it. But listen, he says, when you are captive, you are taken and you are treated very cruel. In Luke 4, you have the fulfillment of Isaiah's prophecy that the Messiah will bring a release. He's going to come and he's going to release those that are captive to sin and to Satan. Listen, it is a statement on what the kingdom. Listen, this is when you get to some kingdom stuff. Listen to this. This kingdom now. This is what a kingdom and its king offer to those who are willing to become its citizens. <laughs> if you're willing to be a citizen. If you're willing. If I have a God has a kingdom. That's why I say you got to be kingdom minded. It ain't about a denomination. He because when he come back, he's not coming back for Baptists. Can all the Baptist people come over here? Can all the the the, the um, Church of God in Christ come over here? Can all the Pentecostals come right here? The Catholics here? He's not coming back like that. He said, "I'm coming back for a kingdom, and with my kingdom, I'm king over the kingdom." And when you become a citizen, you have certain rights. How do I become a citizen? I am born again. James, I am born again. I have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. He is my king. He is king of king and Lord of lords. Listen, I have become a citizen of the kingdom and therefore I have certain rights because of my king. Listen, this is what a king does. He, can, he has the ability to set everybody that's in, in, in prison free. Oh, Jesus, watch this. It says, what does it mean? What does liberty mean? What does liberty mean? Liberty allows you to li listen to this. I'm reading scripture again. It says to proclaim liberty to the captives. So what is liberty? Liberty allows you to live, move, and serve the Lord with purpose. Uh-oh. 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 I'm going to read it again. I'm going to read it again. To proclaim liberty to the captives. That means I'm coming to tell you, you can live, you can move, and you can serve me with the purpose that I've given you. You're free to do that. Oh, God. My citizens, oh, God, listen to this. My citizens of my kingdom, oh, they, they free. They have the liberty to move. They have the liberty to serve. They have the liberty to fulfill the purpose that I put in them. And, and, and you know what? And if they mess up, they can get forgiveness. And if they mess up, I can make them back right. He said, I came to do all that. Watch this. It says, one of the characteristics of liberty in the in, in the person that say they saved. One of the characteristics. Oh God, I love you. One of the characteristics, or you would know if they are really operate, if they really free. Watch this. Is because there it, it is because their life is dictated by listen, my life is dictated by my life is dictated by what I my life is dictated by the scriptures that I read, the word of God. Mm. My life, what I do every day, how I act, how you see me when I'm out at the grocery store or at the mall with the girls and how you see me in church, it's all the same. Why is it all the same? Because my life is dictated by the word of God. My life is dictated by the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Listen, my life is dictated by the indwelling of Holy Spirit. So that means how I act will let you know if I'm really free. Oh, God. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. My, my default setting. I, I passed the show, taught that, and I'm telling you, it's been about a year, Maureen, to tell you, and I still, I'm still talking about it because it resonated in my spirit so much. But listen, my default setting, me, how I respond when, when something jump off, how I respond when somebody make me mad, how I respond when I'm rejected will let you know if I'm really free. And do you still see the word of God on my life? Do you still see the Holy Spirit is dwelling in me when I'm rejected? Oh, Jesus, listen, listen. It says, it says, liberty means that you are free to live, move, and serve the Lord with purpose. L watch it. Oh, God, watch this one. Here we go. Liberty 
Who got? No, no, let me, let me, let me back up because I'm getting so far ahead of myself. Watch this, watch this, watch this, Monique. It does not permit a believer to self-determine their priorities and choices in life. Uh-oh, if I'm really free, Jackie, if I'm really free, if I'm really living a life of freedom, if, if I really have this liberty that God gave me, if, if the Holy Spirit is really dwelling in me, leading and guiding me, if the word of God is, is on my heart and I live it, breathe it, eat it, then I'm not, it says, then if, if all that is happening, I am not going to be, I'm, I'm not going to be self-determined. I'm not going to be, everything I do is not going to be based on what I want to do, how I feel today. What I do and what I say every day is based on, will God do that? Can you take Holy Spirit there? Now, will God respond like that? You always, when, 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 you, when, when you have that Holy Spirit indwelling in you, and when you, and when you are led by the word of God, it will, it will automatically come up in you the minute you do something wrong. You're like, oh God, I'm sorry. Mm, I shouldn't have said that. That conviction will rise up. If that conviction ain't right, I talked about this the other day. If that conviction ain't rising up, Houston, we got a problem and you call yourself saved. We got a problem and you say, I'm free in God. We got a problem when you, okay. Because we want to quote that scripture in church every time we set the atmosphere. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And you do you understand what that means? Listen, <laughs> God, do you understand what liberty means? Liberty mean, watch this Isha, liberty mean I move, I, I am led by the Holy Spirit. Liberty mean I have studied this word of God that is engraved in my heart, that I try, that, that, I, that when I don't do it the right way, something will rise up in me and convict me. We get up in church and we do exaltation because everybody know in any church I'm in, baby, let me, let me usher the spirit in. That's my thing. Let me usher him in. I love to do that. I love because I love to invite God's presence in the sanctuary. And one of the things that we always say is where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And everybody go crazy. Do you know what liberty mean? It don't mean that. That means you free to shout and run. And no, it means it's Holy Spirit dwelling in you. Is the word of God leading and guiding you. That's the only way you free. I feel like I'm working so hard this morning. <laughs> Listen, that's the only way you free. That's the only way you free. Watch this. It says, it says, it does not permit a believer to self-determine priorities and choices in life. Holy Spirit helps me do that. Having the word of God in me does that. Watch this. Liberty without accountability leads to disorder. Uh-oh. 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 Here we go. Here we go, angel. Here we go. Liberty. Listen to this. Liberty without accountability leads to disorder what you talking about dr three because some people and this is why i say this is how you know listen i'm gonna say it one more time liberty without accountability leads to disorder god is a god of order watch this you in the church preachers preaching somebody just started doing some crazy stuff in the back and they say it's because the, the spirit is free to move like it want to move. And I'm telling, listen, I came to correct a whole lot of stuff with the, through the word that God gives me. Watch this. We'll be in church. Y'all seen it happen. Preacher preaching. Somebody back there in the back just start doing a whole bunch of ruckus going crazy. And you're like, wait a minute, I can't even hear what the word of God is. So you like this <laughs> the whole time watching. That's disorder. But we want to put it on, honey, the spirit was free. The spirit was free. So I was doing what I wanted to do. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Even watch this. And I'm going to tell you something, y'all, that, that have the gift of prophecy and you prophetic. The, 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 um, the, the prophet is subject to the prophet. Ooh. Uh-oh. Here we go. Watch this. With no accountability, that means that if I don't have accountability, watch this. Because you have to watch. This is why, listen, this is why I tell my team, I need y'all up before I get in there. Walking and praying and saturating that atmosphere. I need you walking. I need you praying. I need you saturating that atmosphere. I need you to shut down every witch that's going to come in here because I know they're here. I want you to shut down every warlock that's going to come in here because I know they're going to come. I said, because I got to be able to flow in what God told me. We can't have disorder in, in, in any of our services. I said, so, so, there, so my team is watching. I'm watching. I'm paying attention. I'm looking. So watch this because I understand that Satan will send his imps to cause disorder and, and we will put it on. That's because the spirit is moving, honey. The spirit was high. No, that was out of order. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. That is, our, that's a, that is disorder. 
It says, watch this, because where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. That means there is order. Oh, Jesus, there is order. If, if everybody jump up and start prophesying at one, at all at one time, we all confused. Looking around like, wait a minute, whoa, 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 whoa. So what we do, the, the, the order would be one prophet prophesy, another prophet prophesy, another. That would be the order. And watch this. And then what happens is the spirit knows the spirit. Whoa, uh oh, uh oh. Watch this. So you got to be careful where there is when there is no accountability. When you're not accountable to nobody. Oh, Jesus, watch this. When you're not accountable to nobody, you're going to move in disorder. I am account. Watch this. If you say you saved, <laughs> oh God, thank you, Holy Spirit. If you say you saved, born again, I'm full of the Holy Ghost. Okay, so then you're accountable to God, first of all. You're accountable. Listen, you're accountable to what my daddy say. Is this like my dad? Do I have the characteristics of my daddy? You are accountable to him and Holy Spirit, first of all. So what are you doing? Okay, let, let me let me keep going because <laughs> I can stay there all day. Listen, so it says, it says, it says, it says, it says, watch this, watch this. It says, liberty without accountability leads to disorder. Watch this, watch this. Galatians, listen to this, Galatians 5 and 1. Galatians 5 and 1. It is for freedom that Christ set us free. Stand for, well, he's going he gonna to give you some directions. He's going to give you some directions. It is for freedom. He came to set us free. This is why Jesus came because Adam and Eve messed it up. So he had to come again. So Jesus came to set us free. Then it says, stand firm and do not let yourself be burdened again by the yoke of slavery. Who Jesus. Galatians 5 and 1. <clears throat> Gal Thank you, James. Galatians 5 and 1. It says, listen, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm. It says stand firm. Then, so I got to stand firm first. And then I can't go back and be yoked up with sin again. Uh-oh. <laughs> Drop in the chat, stand, Sheila Talbot, you own it this morning. Drop in the chat, stand firm, stand firm. I got to stand firm. I got to stand firm. Watch this. It says, it says, the fact is that Jesus has made us free. That's a fact. It's not an opinion. Jesus made us free. God pleads with us to take his strength and walk in that free. Okay. Take, how do you stand firm? Listen to this. How do I stand firm? I take on the strength of God and I walk in the freedom that he gave me. I take on the strength of God and I'm led by Holy Spirit. I take on the strength of God and I'm led by the word of God. I take on the strength of God and everything I do represents him. Watch this. That's how you stand firm. It says, he says, so take on him. He said, Gee, God, please with us to take his strength and walk in that freedom. And watch this. And do not. Oh, God, do not. Listen to these words. Do not be entangled again. Uh oh, that mean that would mean that in some point in your life, you was tangled up with sin. We all were. None of us came out the womb holier than thou. At some point in your life, you got tangled up with sin. Oh, Jesus, whether it was fornication, whether it was drugs, whether it was lying, because we, we, we want to talk about, oh, honey, listen, they, they, they them sinners over there, <clears throat> them sinners over there, because they live in, they homosexuals, honey, they lesbians, they gay, they get high, they, but baby, you gossip, you lie, you eat too much, that's a sin too, what about gluttony, because <laughs> I even, me, I have to watch that one, because I can eat like, the Lord be like, you know you fool. You know you fool. Why every time you go out to eat, y'all got to go to um, Dairy Queen when you done? You know you fool. You ain't even hungry. Listen, <laughs> those little sins that we're trying to look over that stuff. But we just eating, eating on the phone. Girl, yeah, I heard gossiping. That means at some point in your life, you was tangled up in sin. When I get tangled up in something, that means I'm wrapped so far in it. It's going to take God to untwist me out of that. If you ever saw how they give you, and this is a good, good, I wish I had one here. This, this is a good representation of being tangled up. And you know how when you get that ball of rubber bands and they all twisted up and you'd be looking like, hey, where am I supposed to get one rubber band out of here? But if you pull one, it automatically just come out. Those of you that work in offices and business, you know it's like a ball 
It's, it's almost like the size of a tennis ball, but it's all these rubber bands that's just tangled all up together. But if you pull one, it oh, okay, Holy Spirit. <laughs> oh God, I love you. Holy Spirit just said, yeah, that's just like y'all. He said, y'all just like that ball of rubber bands tangled up in all that mess. He said, but guess what? Because my because my son came, because Jesus came, we can pull one rubber band and you come all the way free. Y'all listen. He said, I can pull one rubber band, just like you pull those rubber bands out that ball. And all of a sudden, he said, even though they tangled up in all that mess, I can pull the one out. I can pull the one out and they free. He said, that's just like you. You were tangled up in sin. He said, but I pulled you out and left all that mess back there. He said, so I'm telling you, don't go back to it. Woo, Jesus. He said, so I'm telling you, don't go back to it. Those of you that work in offices, Tracy, all y'all, when y'all go to work today, please, just find a little ball of rubber bands and send me a picture, please. Please, somebody send it to me, please. Listen, he says, he says, oh, let me slow down. He says, you were just like that. He said, that's what tangled up sin looked like. Oh, God, I hear you this morning. He said, that's what tangled up sin looked like. He said, you all wrapped up in there. You don't even know where to begin or to end it. He said, you don't even know where, he said, you don't even know how I'm going to get you out. He said, but I just pulled one time and you free. Who can I set? Okay. Ah, oh, God. Holy Spirit said, can I set y'all free this morning? Can I set you free? Can I set you free from worrying this morning? He said, I told y'all in the beginning, every, right now we're up to 35 people. He said, I told y'all in the beginning, all y'all that log on to the live right now, I ain't even talking about the replay, sorry, y'all. He said, but all y'all that got up early, got up, got out your bed, you sat up, you paid attention. He said, I came to tell you it's going to be all right. <laughs> oh, God, I love you. He said, I came to tell you it's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. Listen, listen, let, 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 me, let me keep going because I am going to run out of time this morning. So that was Galatians 5 and 1. It's for the freedom that Christ has set us free. He said, so I need y'all to stand firm and don't go back and be burdened again with the yoke of slavery. Yoke of slavery is sin. He says, he says, he says, because he said it is a fact, not an opinion. It is a fact, not an opinion. A fact means I can prove this thing. Check. Whoa. Holy Spirit, why are you doing me like this this morning? And you know I can't go outside and walk because it's pouring down rain. So how am I get this off me? <laughs> so listen, he says, Holy Spirit says, because a fact means I can prove it. He said, how am I prove it? He said, check my track record. Have I ever lost a case? Is, my, is there any stain on my resume? Oh God. He said, check them 66 books. Did I not always come through, Teresa? He said, did I not always show up? He said, I am the slowest on time. God. He said, I will show up just when you need me. He said, check my resume. Nothing had to be erased and rewritten. Oh, God. He said, check it, baby. He said, this is a fact. He said, it is a fact that I came to set you free. Not an opinion. An opinion is what somebody thinks. Oh, Jesus. I'm going to say it again. An opinion is what somebody think. How they feel. Listen. Dropping that check. Say, it's a fact. It's a fact. It's a fact. He said, it's so, oh, Holy Spirit, listen this morning. He said, he said, Teresa, Brenda, he, he said, Miss Dawkins, he said, y'all listen. He said, it's a fact that you're going to be all right. He said, it's a fact that though, he said, he said, it's a fact that in the end you're going to win. He said, it's a fact that if I be for you, who can be against you? He said, it's a fact that you are the head and not the tail. He said, it's a fact that I wish above all things that you prosper and be in good health. He said, it's a fact. Oh, God. Oh, God. He says, it's a fact. It's not an opinion. Check the book. He said, in fact, it's so much of a fact that when I come back, I'm coming riding on a white horse with them with, with crowns on my head. He said, my robe is going to be dipped and dyed in blood. Why is his robe dipped and dyed in blood, Dr. Three? Because he said, I fought every battle and I won. He said, why is the crowns on my head, Dr. Three? He said, because I am king of kings and I'm, I feel so preachy this morning. I am king of kings and I'm lord of lords. He said, it's a fact that I'm going to win, that you're going to win. Listen, let, let me let, let me let me slow it down. Let, let me let me bring it back in. Y'all, y'all mess with me this morning. Jesus, Jesus. He said, he said, today, watch this. He said, he said, we significantly, it is Christ who made us free. We don't make, here we go. Here we go. We don't make ourselves free. Uh oh, I'm gonna deal with these people right here because it's some y'all know them. Y'all know them. We, there is no way possible that you can make yourself free. <laughs> how you gonna make yourself free from sin? Huh? How how could you? Dr. Three can't even make you free. Ooh, you can't do enough to make yourself free. Ooh, Jesus, I love you this morning. Watch this. It says, 
Freedom is a gift of Jesus given to us and received by faith. When we struggle to free ourselves, watch this, when we struggle to set ourselves free, we become even more entangled with the bondage of sin. Y'all, listen. When I struggle to set myself free, what does that mean? How am I struggling to set myself free, Dr. Three? Sandra, that means I'm trying to come up with a way to fix it myself. That means I got all these solutions. <clears throat> I wrote it down on paper <clears throat> and it's going to work just because I wrote it down on paper, baby, because that makes sense. That ain't God. <laughs> I came up with a solution to my problem. And if I do X, Y, and Z, it'll work out. Everything, everything will fall into place. Do you understand when you do that you and you have not given and you have not given God the, the, the right? You, you have not given God the, the, the OK. You have not told Holy Spirit lead and guide me. You have not um, you have not meditated on his word day and night. So I might not sin against you. Uh oh, mm. you have not meditated on his word day and night so that I might not sin against you. Do you understand when you come up with your own way to your own solution? I'm going to fix it. I got it. Did you go deeper in sin? It says the word says, I'm saying, listen. You, when you try, I'm going to say, I'm going to read it. When we struggle to free ourselves, we just become even more entangled again with the yoke of bondage. We become even more deep. Yes, Sheila, you, 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 be, you go deeper down in sin because you have not released it to God and said, God, I need you to help me. I need you to help me. Watch this. And it says, watch this. Today, people live headlong. Today, people live in the pursuit of freedom, which they think this is what the world thinks which they think of as doing whatever they need to do, whatever they want to do, and never denying any desire. And we call these people, watch this. Well, I'm, I'm going to show you how these people work. We call them, watch this, free spirits. We call them bohemians. Listen, we call them hippies. We saw, honey, they eccentric. Honey, they just flow by the beat of their own drum. Honey, they do what they want to do. They go and come. They ain't got no agenda. Okay. And we look at it. Some of us are like, I wish I could be. You, you wish you could be like that? You wish you could be moved by how you feel every day? Well, let me just wake up and see what I'm going to do today. Well, let me just wake up and see what's going to happen today. You ain't led. You ain't consulted Holy Spirit. Sheila Tabber, you, I need to sow a seed to you. Listen, you, you, you just wake up every morning and you just like, oh, let me see what I'm going to do today. You ain't prayed. You ain't got on your face. You just woke up, went in there, brushed your teeth and just walked out the house like, oh, well, let me go see what I can get it. What do we say? Let me see what I can get into today. Huh? What you can get into today? Did you consult God and see what, did, what do he need you to do today? Did you, are you, listen, even though I am here, listen, I told you about 17 years. This is the first time I ain't worked in the summer. Even though I am here. And first I was like, well, I'm going to do all summer. I, did. I was trying to book flights because y'all know I love to go somewhere. I was trying to book flights. I told Brittany, I'm coming. She said, no, we're coming to you. And I was like, wait, what? It's like God sat me down and said, no, no, we got to schedule this summer, baby. I still need you in the bed by eight. I still need you up praying. I still need you fasting. I still need you doing all this. He said, because what he said, because what you got to understand, you ain't no free spirit. You belong. Mm, God, watch this. You belong to me. And I got an agenda for your life. Listen, 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 listen. It says, so we look at those people and we say, oh, they free. They just do what they want to do. This is a kind of liberty that's called false liberty. Mm. False liberty. Satan will make you think, I talk, sin. Satan will make you think, oh, that's good, honey. You woke up there, you ain't got nothing on your agenda, honey. You, this is your day. Go get you a massage. Go do what you need to do. Go do that. Satan will have you thinking that's good. Watch this. Satan will have you thinking that this that that's what you need to do. Satan will have you thinking that every day is me time. <laughs> and I stay on my team. I said, where's your, where, when, when you taking care of yourself? I believe in self-care because, listen, y'all don't even understand that this, me, oh, my nails and feet getting done twice a month. I'm going to I'm going to get me a massage for 90 minutes once a month. Oh, I take care of me because this right here, what I do, it takes a lot. So I'm not saying stop doing that. No, because God wants you to take care of yourself. You only get one. OK, I don't know why I'm going here. You only get one temple. You got to take care of it. Watch this. I'm talking about them folks that woke up, wake up every day in this me time. Baby, I'm going to take myself out to eat today. Tomorrow, I'm going to take myself to the movies. The next day, I'm going to go get me a massage. The next day, I'm going to go out to eat. The next day. And they just going. You looking like. So you have no consistency about your time with God. I mean, where he's, you did, you did run well. What happened? You was on fire. You did, you, you were consistent. I mean, I remember you had a certain prayer time. I remember you would lay before him at a certain time. I remember what happened to all that? Well, honey, I got to go get my nails done first. I mean, I get to, I, I'll do that um later. I get to that later. 
free spirits. Watch this. Then he says, it says, it says, what, what, what was his instructions to us? It is for freedom. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm. Stand firm. That means to stand fast. Then, then, and do not let yourselves be burdened again by the yoke of slavery. What does stand firm means? What does stand fast mean? It means it's going to take effort. Oh, Lordy. It's going to take effort. Do you think? It's go y'all y'all heard me tell about but y'all heard when I opened up I said listen to stand fast listen to stand fast and to stand firm means to take effort that means you got to do something oh Jesus drop effort in the chat drop drop effort in the chat it's going to take effort someone who is legally made free in Jesus can still live in bond listen to this it can someone who is legally made free in Jesus can still live in bondage they can be deceived. Watch this. Jesus came. He died. He rose. He did all that to deal with sin once and for all and to set us free. But even though we've been set free, we can still live in bondage. How? When you are deceived into placing yourself back into slavery. That's why he's saying, don't go back to that again. It can happen. He's saying, don't go back to that again. It can happen. So when I say stand fast, that means it's going to take some effort. That means it's going to take some consistency. That means it's something you got to do. That means you got to fast and you got to pray. That means you got to read his word. He said, you can't just wake up and say, well, whatever. I'm free now. Did you do, what did you do? Oh God, what are you doing to maintain? This, and this is why I love deliverance ministry. This is why I love deliverance ministry. And this is where a lot of ministries fall short. Watch this. After you go through the whole service of being delivered, you done spit, you done fell out, the demons came out, I'm tired, everybody tired, and you came through. After the house is swept clean, watch this. After the house is swept clean, after you've been set free from all those demonic spirits, they will sit around and they waiting. Oh God, they waiting to come back. How are you fortifying the house? Oh God, how are you fortifying the house? This is why follow-up care is so important. After we go through deliverance, I'm going to contact you. How you doing? You good? You in your word? You reading? You studying? Because I ain't heard from you. You done went silent on me. Where you at? You good? You got to make sure that when you go through deliverance, when that house is swept clean, you the house is now empty. So I got to fill it up with the word of God. The house is now empty. So every day I got to invite the Holy Spirit to have access. The house is empty. So right now I got to I got I got to make sure that I'm in my word because if the word of God is, is in my heart, I won't that I might not sin against him. But when I go through deliverance, well, God, when I go through deliverance and I walk out that service, watch this. It says, watch this, watch this. It says, do not be entangled with sin again. You have been set free. But when you walk out that service after Friday night and you all knew, 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 everything new, new, new. After Friday night and you leave and you wake up Saturday morning, what you going to do? Mm, God, what you going to do Saturday morning? Honey, I had a lunch date with my girls. Oh, really now? Really? Okay. And I went on about my business. I was, and then you calling me five days later, Dr. Three. I know we had a powerful time on Friday night, but now I'm, I'm, I'm just going through. What happened after Friday night, baby? Did you try to make it to a church on Sunday? Were they, were they teaching the word? Because after you get delivered, you got to fill that empty house up with something. Who got, I got to fill it up with the word of God. He's saying here, he's saying here, you got to stand fast. It's going to take some effort. Do you want to get up every morning at five and pray? No. Do you want to turn down your plate twice a week? No. But I know in order for me to maintain my deliverance, in order for me to maintain my freedom, I got to do something. Oh, Jesus. I got to get in my word, Lisa. I got to get on my face, Lisa. I got to be praying. I got to be fasting. I got to make sure that I'm building up my spirit, man. Watch it. Watch it this morning. Listen. So it says, so it says, so it says, watch this. It says, stand fast means to take effort. Listen. And then it says, it says, listen, it says, it takes effort to stay in that place of liberty. Someone who is legally made free and Jesus can still live in bondage. They can be deceived by Satan to going back to what they were in. They can be deceived by Satan to going back to what they were in and now they're back in bondage. Watch this. The yoke of bondage. Listen, when, when, when they talk about the yoke of bondage, watch, watch where this come from. Watch where this come from. This come from Acts 15 and 10. Listen to this. Acts 15 and 10 Peter said in Acts 15 and 10 about those who would bring the Gentiles under the law. Now, therefore, why do you test God by putting a yoke on your neck of the disciples? 
which neither our fathers nor nor we were able to bear. The Jews themselves were not able to justify themselves before God by the law. So they shouldn't put that heavy burden on the Gentiles. Watch this. Certain Jewish teachers. I love this. Watch this. Certain Jewish teachers, certain Jewish teachers of that day spoke of the law of Moses as a yoke. Listen to this. They spoke of the law of Moses as a yoke. And but they use this term, they said it to be yoked up by the law of Moses. It's a good thing. Watch this. This is how they talk. Paul said, no, a legal relationship as Paul saw a legal relationship as a yoke, as a yoke, but as a yoke of bondage. Watch this. Because it related to slavery, not being free. This yoke of bondage does nothing but entangle us. This is what Paul was telling him. He said, no, no, no y'all got too many rules. Watch this. We try hard to pull God's plow, but the yoke of bondage leave us tangled, restrict. Listen to this. Leaves us tangled, restricted. Listen to this. Leaves us tangled, restricted, and frustrated. Mm. Watch this. This is what happened. Jewish teachers get, listen to this. Jewish teachers of the Bible, when they were saying, oh, it's good to be yoked up with the law of Moses. Listen to this. They gave them, watch this. 613 commandments. Who Sheila Talbert, listen. They gave them 613 commandments and said, this is the law of Moses and we got to keep it. All 613, you can't break none of them. Paul said, that's a yoke right there. <laughs> Paul said, how in the world? He said, you, he said, you're going to make them go further into sin. What are you doing? He said, that's too many rules. 613, what is it? 613. And then, and then it says, even to remember them all was a burden. Listen, you getting frustrated because you're trying to remember. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What, what was number? Do anybody remember what number 55 was? Oh, Jesus. Paul said, what are y'all doing? He said, you sending them further in the sin. He said, you couldn't keep them. He, he said, you couldn't keep all 613. So how you expect them to be able to do it? He said, you, he said, you making that yoke even worse for them. Listen, he said, even to remember them all was a burden and to keep them and to keep them bordered and in bondage. He said it was impossible. It says Paul referred to subjecting oneself to them all is also entering into slavery. He said them rules putting them in slavery. <laughs> oh, Paul was a force to be reckoned with. He said y'all, he said all 613 them commandments that y'all trying y'all best to fulfill and you can't. He said you can't. Your daddy couldn't. You can't. Your brother can't. Nobody can. He said so you taking them further into bondage. Because now they're getting frustrated. Now they feel restricted. Now they wore out. Now they just say, forget it. Bondage. That, that's why I told y'all, y'all have to watch them cultist churches with all them rules. And the minute you don't show up, honey, she probably out. Where you, was you at? What you doing? All these rules. All these rules. If you just follow the word of God, if you just let Holy Spirit lead and guide you, you're going to be okay. When we open up, God already told me, he said, everybody get on that live this morning. He said, tell them they're going to be all right. He said, that's their prophetic word. I don't care what you facing, what you going through. He said, you're going to be all right. The problem is worrying. We dealt with that first. The problem is we don't really know what it means to be free. Watch this. It says, it's, I'm going to keep going. Listen, it says, so they had 613 of uh, the, the um, Jewish teachers had 613 rules or commandments and couldn't nobody follow them. Everybody was messing up. So everybody was saying, forget it. Everybody was saying, well, I'm just going to do what I want to do. That's a lot like some of these churches that run people away, that run my millennials away. I call them mine because they're my babies that run them away because you got all these rules. Why you dress like that? Why you look like that? Baby, pull your skirt down. Baby, you can't dress like that. Let them come like let them come like they are. If you're preaching the word of God, they're going to change. If you're preaching the word of God, you ain't got to say nothing. Just let them come. It says eventually they will change. Okay, let me get, I'm going to leave that alone. Listen, so our last part, our last two parts of this teaching. <laughs> if this is good, say Dr. Three, this is good, it's good, it's good. Listen, lay them young folk alone. Y'all y'all get on my nerves messing with them. Lay them alone. Leave them, because I'm going to tell you, them be some of your biggest seed sowers come with some ideas and be like, Dr. Three, this right here, like how you need to fix this. Oh, I know how to do that. Why do you think I got my girls on the medium team? I got my girls on the media team and they'll do little stuff because I said, don't be going live. Don't, don't go live when I'm doing something. And they, so they went live anyway. <laughs> and said, well, I put up a snippet. I said, what you mean you put up a snippet? What's a snippet? What you doing? I mean, I say don't go lie. They say, Mama, a snippet mean 10 minutes. They said we put up 10 minutes of when the praise got high. So people, so he so he could show people how the spirit moved. And I just looked, I said, you know what? You right. You right. 
And so, and, and, and so I love it because I, I love when Whitney came home and she was like, well, mom, um, she, we were talking about church and stuff. And, and the girls was like, yeah, you know, mama, mama be dressing all up. She'd be the only one in that dress. So she'd be the only one in there dressed up with them heels. You know how she is about them shoes. They said, but we get to wear jeans with me. Mama don't even make us wear dresses no more. I said, I'm going to leave y'all alone. I said, I'm going to leave you alone. I said, because that's good. I said, just come. I said, I don't care. I said, come like you want to come. Come. I, I tell them, I say, baby, bring the sinners in. Watch this. Because we, tr- oh God, I don't know why I'm on this this morning. Because what we do is we want to church the people that's already churched. We want to deal with those that's just like us. They, they they holier than thou. They got on their long skirts. They long, but but what 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 what? But what do we need to do? I need the people to get in here that's sick, <laughs> so I can get them healed. So me and Holy Spirit can get them healed. If if you already good, then you good. What about them other people? Listen, listen, listen. That, that's why y'all see me hugging on the young people all the time. They all always around me, and, and I do have an old spirit now. Because, because listen now, I'm going to tell you, a, a lot of these um, young preachers that y'all going crazy over, I can't get with them. I can't. I go back to Jackie McCullough. I go back to Bishop I own a lot. I go to Dr. Carolyn Showell. They're the type of preachers I like that preach holiness of hell. That's just me. And 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 and, and <laughs> what, what, what tickles me is the millennials get in my ministry. They're like, you know what? I, it's just something about you, baby. It's the word of God. It's going to draw you in every time. Listen, listen, let, let, let me get back to this. So we were talking about rejection. We were talking about rejection. Watch this. We were talking about rejection. Watch this. And we, we talked about the benefits of rejection. So today we're on day three. Rejection will cause you to explore a different path. Mm. Rejection will cause me to explore a different path. Maybe the way I'm doing it ain't working. This is what rejection does. It says, watch this. Sometimes rejection in is life's way of telling us we need to look at it. it we need to look at a different path to get to where God wants us to be. Watch this. If I'm trying to do something a certain type of way, if I'm trying to do something a certain type of way, and I bring it to you, and it's not working, you're like, no, that ain't working. That is my. T- what did I say? Whenever I'm rejected, the first thing I'm gonna do is go back to God. When I give you an idea, you say no. Mm-mm. I'm so, okay. I'm not gonna get me. I'm not gonna go through these, and I get to these steps, th- these steps of rejection, the stages of rejection later. When I give an idea, when I present my thought, when I do what I got to do, I'm gonna come to you. And if you say it's not, no, I don't agree with that. That's just not right. I'm gonna go back to God and say, okay, God, is it a different way you want me to do this? Is it a different way you want me to approach this? Is it a different avenue you got? And sometimes he'll say, absolutely. It is a different way. I needed you to reject it. Oh, ooh, Jesus. Oh, Lord. He says, I needed them to reject you so I can redirect you. (laughs) Oh, God. He says, I needed them. Listen to this. I needed them to reject you so I could redirect you. Oh, God, that's a word in itself. Drop that in the chat. Rejection equals redirection. Oh, God. Rejection equals redirection. Sometimes you're rejected so I can get you to look at it a different way. Sometimes you're rejected so I can get you to come back to me so I can show you now. This is the way you need to go about doing it. Rejection equals redirection. Listen to this. Let, let me keep going. It says rejection can be positive, can be a positive experience if you are willing to take another road or try a new way of achieving the same thing. Mm. Say it again. Rejection can be a positive experience. I told you it's some benefits to being rejected. It's power in being rejected. We learned in the day that rejection can mean can mean redirection. Oh God, I need to turn you a different way. That ain't the way I want you to go. Watch this because I re- listen. I remember, I remember when I started worshiping warfare. So this was like two thousand. 14, maybe I started worshiping more and boy, I was on fire. I was so excited. I was like thinking in my mind, all the churches in Charlotte, North Carolina, they all kingdom minded. Who wouldn't want me to bring this um, event to their church? Who wouldn't want this to happen in their church? Because baby, the residue, listen. Listen, the residue, the residue from after you have worshiping more. I already knew what it was going to do. I already God already showed me. So I went to a pastor. And I went to a pastor and I said, look, this is the idea that God gave me. And they were like, oh, God, 
That's good. I'm not worshiping. What, why you even put those two words together? And I broke it down just like God gave it to me. And the pastor was so excited. And I said, so all I want to do is bring it back to, I want to bring it back home because this is a pastor that I served under. I said, I want to bring it back home. I, I want to have it in your church. And, 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 and I'm, I, don't, I said, it's okay if your members come. I don't care. I said, but I'm not going after denomination. I'm going after kingdom people. Watch this. He was all good. He said, absolutely. Oh, three. That's good. You know what? That's all God right there. That's all God right there. I agree with that. Man, do you know? In about, I don't even think a week passed. Not even a week passed. He called me back and said, you know what? I thought about that. Nah, my church ain't going to be available. Y'all, my little feelings were so hurt. I was like, your church ain't going to be available. I said, what you mean? Your I said, it's on a Friday night. I said, but you know what? God bless you. <laughs> God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. And I went back to God in prayer. I said, God, I know what you told me. I said, God, I know what you told me. I said, you told me to have this. I know I ain't pastoring. And at the time, I wasn't on Facebook all like this, so I didn't have no following. I ain't have nothing. I just had a gift, a, 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 a prophecy from God and a vision from God. I knew how I was supposed to look. I knew the sound. Lisa Dalton was there. They ministered. I knew everything. So I went back to God. He said, first of all, I'm going to redirect you because I never said to take it to a church. Uh-oh. He said, I never told you to take it to a church. He said, where'd you get that idea from? And I said, well, God, I was thinking because it's sort of like a church event. He says, ain't no church event. I would tell one of my mentees, I said, you know what? I said, <laughs> I said, the thing that got me, I says, the way God talked to some of y'all is just so sweet and kind. I said, he don't talk to me like that. I said, he be hollering. Nine times out of 10, he hollering. I said, so. I said, so I was going to take it back to the church, God. And then they, see, I didn't worry about it. I went to God about it because I was concerned about the no, that the rejection that I received. So I went back to God and I said, I said, God, they, 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 he told me no. And this is why, where, where you birthed the intercessory prayer team in me in, in 98. I, this is where it all started. So I thought I should, it would be amazing to take it back there. He said, but I never told you to take it to a church. He said, I tell you that. I said, no, but I figured it was a church event. He said, who told you it was a church event? I said, oh God, he said, this is kingdom. <laughs> oh God. He said, this is kingdom. He said, I don't want it in the church. So then I went to the pastor that I was under at the time and he opened up. He said, oh, Dr. Three. Yes. Praise God. You can have it in the sanctuary. I said, oh no. Cause I got scared there. Cause God had already rebuked me. I said, I have it in the sanctuary. I said, but y'all got this big, nice gym over here. Can I go over there and have it? He said, you want to have it in a gym? I said, I want it in a gym. I don't want it in a sanctuary because I don't want it to feel churchy. I don't want it to feel religious. And God began to, and, and so the pastor was like, go ahead. I mean, if you want to have it over there, go ahead. It's all yours. Free of charge. Use it. And I'm like, okay. And so when, when, I, when I started walking in the redirection of God, watch this, everything fell in place. Everything fell in place. He had to redirect me because I, even though I was doing what he told me to do, I was I had the assignment in my and I was going going doing it the way he told me, but I went the wrong avenue. And he had to redirect me and say, I never said in a church. I never said it was a church event. He said, I said it was kingdom. And I said, don't take it to a church. Okay. Okay. Let me get with the stages of rejection. Stages of rejection. When you're first rejected, <clears throat> The first stage will be denial. I can't believe they done that. Did I get pumped? And you go back to God. That's what I did. That's what you should do. You deny it. You're like, no, this didn't happen. Maybe they didn't hear. Um, maybe they didn't quite understand the way I said it. So you, you, you're in denial. Then you get mad. Baby, you gonna wish you had to help me. You gonna wish you had a. That's how we do. Third stage. Then we start bargaining. We ain't mad no more. Then we start bargaining. Maybe I need to do it another type of way and go back to him and present it again. God said, no, no, no. Watch this. So the fourth step is we get depressed about it. They don't know about it like me. Don't nobody want to help me. I'm, I'm trying to do a kingdom work. I got a kingdom assignment on my life and don't nobody want to help me and don't nobody want to listen to me. And we, we, we get through that little depression stage. The woe is me. I don't have no help. We get through that. And finally, we get to the stage of, of acceptance. After this teaching, because this is the third day of this teaching. After this teaching, you ain't going to go through all those phases. Mm. You ain't going to go through the denial. I got mad. I got angry. And then I got depressed. And then I, I started bargaining. With, you ain't going to go through all that. Why you not going to go through it? Because now you know. Now you know. If you did not see that, the prayer call on, go to my YouTube. You may, 
I think it's on my Facebook page. I just need you to go to the right one. Look at Monday's because Monday was, oh my God. Just look at Monday's live. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. Look at Monday's live. But what is God saying to this morning? Because I am way over my time. I got to get off here. What is God saying to us this morning? He says, I came this morning to tell you that you're going to be all right. No matter what it looked like, no matter what you're facing, no matter what the doctor said, no matter what the bills are, he said, you're going to be all right. You're going to make it through. He said, you're going to make it through. He told me this morning, he said, everybody that log on there, that's on there this morning, not the replay people. Sorry, replay people. He said, but not them. He said, but those that, that sacrificed, that ran up on it. He said, I came to tell you this morning, you going to be all right. He said, I don't care what it looked like. He said, because today I'm dealing with worryation. He said, if you worry, he said, it's a difference in worrying and being concerned. He said, when you worried about something, he said, you open up, he said, you open up your mind to mind traffic, to mind confusion, to doubt, to fear, to disbelief, to depression. He said, when you, when you worry, you open up your mind to all of that. He said, but when you're concerned, you come to daddy. Oh God. He said, when you're concerned, you're going to come to me. He said, when you're concerned, you're going to say, daddy, how can you fix it? He said, when you're concerned, you're going to come and see but what, what is my solution to this thing? Listen, because I'm way over my time. I'm going to go ahead and pray and get off here so you guys can get your day started. Father God, we lift you up. We magnify your great and your mighty name, dear God. We thank you this morning for your word. We thank you this morning for your prophetic flow. We thank you this morning, oh God, for Holy Spirit speaking and moving and, and saturating our atmospheres this morning. We thank you, oh God, because you are a good and a loving father. We thank you, oh God, for sending your son Jesus to for the remedy, oh God, for the remedy of sin, for giving us this freedom that we can move in our purpose, that we can live in our purpose, that we can fulfill our purpose. We thank you for the freedom that your son Jesus gave us, the freedom to be forgiven for sin. We thank you for him giving us the remedy to sin. We thank you for him setting us free. We thank you that we're no longer in the bondage of sin. We thank you that we're no longer entangled. Oh God, we're no longer entangled with sin because you have set us free, God. And we decree and we declare on this morning that we won't go back. We will drop that in the chat. We won't go back. We won't go back. We won't go back and be entangled again because we know today if we go back, we're going to go deeper in it. Oh God, so we thank you for pulling us out. We thank you for calling us your own. We thank you for being your remnant. We thank you for being your chosen. We thank you for pulling us out of sin. And we thank you this morning, oh God, for giving us the power to live in you for giving us the power to move by Holy Spirit. But thank you for the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. But thank you for putting your word in our heart that we might not sin against you. We thank you because we know that your word is true. Your word will come to pass. We thank you this morning, God, for breathing on us once again. We thank you this morning, oh God, for setting us free. Oh God, we thank you for freedom this morning. We thank you for all that you're doing, all that you're saying in this season. We thank you because we will be consistent. We will be steadfast. We will stand firm, meaning we will read our word. We will fast. We will pray. We will do what we need to do to keep our freedom. We thank you for dealing with worryation this morning and sending it back to the pits of hell from whence it came. God, we are concerned about many things, but we bringing them to you. We bringing you our burden. We're letting you deal with it today. On this day, we decide no more worrying about it. We know we were concerned, so we're going to tell you about it, but we're not going to worry about it and, and, and open up the gate for fear, open up the gate for doubt, open up the gate for all these other spirits that are linked with it. We give it to you today, and we thank you for being the great God and Father that you are. We thank you for being the great provider, the great healer, the great deliverer. We thank you today, and we give you all praise, all glory. It's in your name we pray. Amen and amen. Listen, if you want to sow, I put it up on the screen because somebody just texted me and said it's not up. Okay. If you want to sow, the information is on the screen. If you want to sow, the information is on the screen. And when you sow today, I want you to tag your seed freedom. When you sow, I want you to tag your seed freedom. Listen, when you sow, you're sowing into good ground. If you don't have any a church home that you're tithing into, this is absolute miracle soil. Sign, and I always tell people, you ain't got to believe nothing I say. Watch my fruit. Ask somebody that follow me. Ask somebody that is, that, that's linked up with me. Watch my fruit. That means watch what God does through this ministry. This is his ministry. This ain't Dr. Threek's ministry. 
It's his ministry. So what is his kingdom assignment? So watch what God does through it. Listen, what, that's why I say watch my fruit. If you want to sow, the information is on the screen. Listen, whatever you do Friday night, God has given us a word. The word is new, new, but he's given me a whole different approach to it. And I said, oh God, he, he began to talk to me about Nicodemus. So y'all know I'm, I'm still trying to get through that word. I'm trying to get through it. So listen, and on Friday night, we're going to deal with the word new. New, 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 new. I, every time I think about it, it's just like my mind is like, oh God. So we're gonna deal with new on Friday night, but on in to, in in tomorrow, on in the morning. Listen, in the morning, we're gonna be back on here at six a.m. talking about the power of rejection, the power of rejection. Some of you that's just logging on, God told me to tell you, today is your day. God told me to tell you today. He is for you. God told me to tell you today you win. Listen, I love you. I love you. I love you. There's absolutely nothing you can do about it. Meet me back here in the morning at 6 a.m. for day four of prayer. My God, this week is like flying by now. Day four of prayer and whatever you do, don't miss Friday night. Don't come by yourself. Get everybody, get all your family members, get everybody, bring them in there. Y'all know what happened last, the last time we were together. And this is actually the last Friday night before worship and warfare. So we having it this Friday. Then we will not have service again until August 11th. Wow. To August 11th. But you know I'm going to be on here live, still screaming, still hollering, still giving God glory. Listen, so we, we, will, be, we will do our fast before uh, worship and warfare like we did last year. But make sure you're in the house on Friday night. I keep telling y'all, y'all getting that little residue on Monday is not the same as being in the house. It's not the same as being in the house. God bless you, Shay. It's not the same as being in the house. Listen, I love you. I need you to have a good day on purpose. I need you to remember he has set me free. Baby, I ain't worrying about nothing. What was the prophetic word? It's going to be all right. Oh God, I love you. Amen.